Jane Austen was only 41 years old when she died. During her lifetime, four of the six great books she wrote, Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Mansfield Park, Emma, they didn't even have her name on them. When she died, the entire earnings from her novels amounted to around 650 pounds. She had been engaged once to a man she had grown up with that had extensive lands and estates, but she ultimately broke off the engagement the very next morning. In 1816, Jane began feeling unwell. It started out as something that no one quite took notice of, including Jane. Then she began having pains in her back, but still she continued to write until she finished her beloved book, Persuasion. By the beginning of January 1817, she told everyone that she was stronger than she was a year and a half ago. She told people that her illness was rheumatism and bile, and in every possible way, she tried to will away any sickness. And so, she did what she knew best, write. From January to March of 1817, she wrote 12 chapters, but on March 8th, Jane became seriously ill with fever and a bilious attack. When her niece came to visit, she said of Jane, I was struck by the alteration in herself. She was very pale. Her voice was weak and low, and there was about her a general appearance of debility and suffering. But I have been told that she never had much actual pain. She was not equal to the exertion of talking to us, and our visit to the sick room was a very short one, and Cassandra soon taking us away. I do not suppose we stayed a quarter of an hour, and I never saw Aunt Jane again. By April, things continued to get worse. She was bedridden and suffered from night fevers and a strange discharge. A surgeon visited from Winchester, and after his visit, in secret, she wrote a will. Jane's health had so deteriorated that she agreed to be taken from where she was living 16 miles to Winchester to be attended by the surgeons there. All the while, she still continued to write in letters that she was recovering, when the reality was, she wasn't. On July 15th, just three days before she died, Jane dictated a comedic poem to her dear sister, Cassandra, who she spent so much of her life with. Cassandra wrote that evening that there was a visible change in Jane. She slept more and much more comfortably. Indeed, she was more asleep than awake. Her looks altered and she fell away, but I perceived no material diminution of strength. And though I was then hopeless of a recovery, I had no suspicion how rapidly my loss was approaching. On July 17th at 5.30 p.m., Jane had a seizure and became incredibly faint. Her doctor was called in and he told everyone that the end was near. Cassandra tells us, during that half hour was her struggle, poor soul. She said she could not tell us what she suffered, though she complained of little fixed pain. When I asked her if there was anything she wanted, her answer was that she wanted nothing but death. And some of her words were, God grant me patience, pray for me, oh, pray for me. Her voice was affected, but as long as she spoke, she was intelligible. A half an hour later, Jane lost consciousness. Jane's sister Cassandra was with her until the very end. And after Jane breathed her last breath at 4.30 in the morning on July 18th, Cassandra shut her eyes. She wrote, she was the sun of my life, the gilder of every pleasure, the soother of every sorrow. I had not a thought concealed from her, and it is as if I have lost a part of myself. Cassandra cut several locks of Jane's hair as a remembrance. It was arranged for Jane to be buried in Winchester Cathedral on the 24th of July, early in the morning before services started for the next day at the cathedral. 
before Jane was laid to rest in the cathedral. Her body sat for six days in an open coffin in one of the very small rooms of the house she had stayed in in Winchester. On the morning of July 24th, her coffin was closed and wheeled to Winchester Cathedral. Three of Jane's brothers and one of her nephews walked beside her coffin as the only mourners. Jane was buried in the north aisle of the nave. A temporary stone was placed on the tomb until the final one with an epitaph was finished being made. All of Jane's novels had been published anonymously during her life. It wasn't until after she passed that her name was revealed and she was acknowledged as the author. The proceeds from her biography paid for a brass plaque memorializing her in 1872. And in 1900, a stained glass window depicting different biblical figures, each with symbolic meanings related to Jane's life and work, was paid for by public subscription. <laughs>